Welcome everyone to a first video lecture on Paul Natorp, Paul Natorp, who is a member of the Marburg School of Neo-Kantianism, together with Hermann Cohen, who was his teacher before, and Ernst Cassira, with whom Heidegger had a falling out in Davos. Paul Natorp was, or is, you could say, the unknown teacher of Heidegger, but this won't be a video on supposed influences from Natorp to Heidegger as scholars are wont to do, but we can see that Heidegger's thought, which develops with being in time and later, does originate also from especially Paul Natorp, if not so much the other Neo-Kantians, but and especially the later Paul Natorp. And the um, what's unknown, as it were, is that usually what's referred to as Husserl, Heidegger is a phenomenologist, etc. But we can see that there is a response, of course, to Hegel and to Kant that is crucial. I will be reading from Paul Natorp's Philosophische Systematik, which is was a lecture course that he gave in the summer semester of 1922 and 1923 in Marburg. Now we'll read, uh, to my knowledge, this book is not translated into English, so I will read some passages from it, sometimes in German, and then translate and comment. But first I will read from Hans-Georg Gadamer's talk or presentation an essay that he wrote in honor of Paul Natorp's 100th birthday, which was on 21st of January 1954. This is when, because Gadamer was a student also of Natorp. It begins with the following sentence, De nobis ipsis selemus. And he praises Natorp here for his capacity, for his ability to be silent, to be silent especially when it comes to himself, and to speak only of die Sache. In philosophy, we are only ever concerned with die Sache, with the question at hand, with the issue, the sake, the for the sake of which, and not the ego. And here, Gadamer also points out what is the Grundgedanke, the fundamental thought of the Marburg school, of Marburg Neo-Kantianism from which Paul Natorp doesn't depart, but which he takes, thankfully, in a very different direction than Hermann Cohen and Kassirer. And that is the question of the method of the origin, the Methode des Ursprungs, and the Erzeugung, the generation of reality through pure thinking. And it was a mathematical solution that Hermann Cohen presented with the, um, the mathematical uh, solution to the continuum of movement, for example, um, where they thought that they could find in mathematics, in their pure, the pure laws of math, the uh, origin for thought. But Natorp moves away from this significantly, especially with this text, and moves back to the truthfulness or the truth of the idea itself and away from the pure uh, Regelwerk, the uh, conglomeration of laws and the lawfulness of the natural sciences, back to a marriage of Logos and Mythos, which is also present for Natorp in Plato. So, let me also read from this text an anecdote which Gadamer relates, but that he remembers that the young Heidegger and Natorp used to take walks very often around Marburg often both in silence 
and the younger one, that would be Heidegger, um, respectfully turned towards and leaning over to Nighthop and listen in silence to what is being thought. And Gadamer mentioned something which today is almost entirely forgotten, which is the darkness and brightness of the one philosophy. We can rarely hear anyone speak of the eine Philosophie, the one philosophy that stretches back in a mute or silent dialogue for millennia and through generations. Gadamer reminds us that Nathorp's thinking was in its entirety the attempt to respond to a question which was asked by Master Eckhart. Why do you go out? And once more the response, as it was with Plotinus and the mystics, with Fichte and with Hegel, is a resounding again um heim zu finden in order to find home. So, I will now move on to the first paragraph of Natop's Philosophische Systematik, Philosophical Systematicity, where he explains the title of the work, or better, the title of the lecture course. And it should give us, we should, um, wonder why today there aren't lecture courses like this written anymore inside universities and in philosophy departments. I'm translating from the German, so please forgive me if it's a bit wooden. Philosophische Systematik, Philosophical Systematicity is the title or the theme of this lecture course. Systematicity not system. The claim of this system, or sorry, the claim of the system itself, namely that there can be a whole system, is what critical philosophy, the critical philosophy of Kant, has severely questioned. That means the philosophy that takes its departure from Kant cannot forget so easily. Whether a system um, can have ultimate truth and ultimate validity, that is to a certain degree um, not yet decided and perhaps not even to be decided. Instead, he says that there cannot be a system of systems. If anything, there can be a system of critique itself. We are, for Neotop, he is stoutly aware of the crisis, the crisis of modernity, and for him this crisis is that the human being is trapped in the sciences for the sake of the sciences, to engage in art only for the sake of art, to fight only for the sake of fighting, and sees and realizes and notices nothing beyond the struggle, nothing beyond the engagement or the activity, that the human being does not move beyond itself. In paragraph three, Nathorp then moves towards Heraclitus. And I think it's crucial that Heraclitus is recurring with Nator, of course, with Heidegger, and before with Hegel. And this is where perhaps we can see um, the, 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 how the, the new Kantianism, if you like to use this ism, of Nator is going well beyond Kant and well beyond perhaps um, even what what Heidegger allows uh, 
Neo-Kantianism to have been. So, death, and I'm going to be summarizing, translating a bit. But it's not going to be a, a literal translation. Life must at last become become powerful against death. If it doesn't, then life does not live. But as life overpowers death, life proves to itself in the relentless struggle with death how at all power proves itself or shows itself only in struggle and in overcoming. All of life struggles and fights all of uh, with with death, but and it must rise itself, raise itself constantly and consistently in a struggle, in a battle with death, and to in order to overcome its own death, as it were. Um, to live, and this is a direct uh, translation now, to live means to fight. If it doesn't fight, it doesn't live. So here he says, he quotes Polymos Pater Pantonestin, war is the father of everything. Because, as Nature says, war is the creator, which from the abyss of not being takes out being picks it up. He's the generator, which from the lifeless awakens dormant life. So therefore, death stands in the midst of the most truthful life, but therefore also death stands in the most truthful, real, actual, the most real death. Only in auf sich nehmen, so in accepting death, can there be a full life. And we will see how he, um, what he criticizes Kant for in a second. However, this is something, um, there's something that uh, in the, Her the Heracletianism, if you like, the Her of, uh, of NATO, up, that also is slightly... Um, well, where you can see that, that Kant is still all too powerful, in even in his so-called Neo-Kantianism, when quoting the Pantare, which is now believed is not necessarily really from Heraclitus, but for uh, the way in which Nathab understands it, is this almost standard way of understanding Heraclitus, that everything is in flux, the a Kratilonian understanding of uh, Heraclitus that das alles zerfließt. This is not just being in flux, but actually that uh, zerfließen is, is almost flowing uh, away and this disappearing by flowing away. Um, therefore, and he quotes uh, refers here to Plato's uh, Theatet, Theatet um, that nothing. Um, um, remains determinable. And for Nator, this seems to be the case that anything that becomes, that is corroborated or determined is always just hypothesis. And that is to say, Unterstellung in German, supposition. So something must be supposed, must be, an Unterstellung can also have a negative connotation in German. It must be a Sort of almost a nefarious claim against reality because there is the flow of everything. However, the what he's working towards is his understanding of the it is, the es ist, where, um, of course, we can already see time uh, spitting, where in the it is, there is a coming together of that which was, toti and einai, and the it is becoming and that um, so the it is can only ever be said if it is in in harmony with the it was and with the it 
will be. However, this notion of the hypothesis that comes in, so it is not to say that he subscribes fully to uh, this Cretulonian um, Heracleseanism, the standard understanding of Heraclitus, that the Pantere means that everything is just flowing away and there's, everything is in flux and nothing is stable and fixed and determinable. However, th this hypothetical way of understanding um, how being can be thought is still, you can see, kind of an entrapment in Kantianism. Because Kant himself, who does not allow for dialectics, does not move back behind the hypothesis at all. So, um, but here is his critique of Kant, which perhaps is relevant. What Nathorpe is after is life itself, lebendigkeit, liveliness, the liveliness of activity, the liveliness of uh, experience. And we'll get to um, his, his understanding of reason in a second, which is another major departure from Kant. But for Kant, uh, Nathorpe here points out, the issue is that alles erstarrt und verblasst, Everything becomes pale and and encrusted um, uh, with Kant um, because everything is just a mere fact of science, and of course also this you know the the ethical uh, religion etc. The the Vernunft Gott this this cold dead God of reason, um, but there is no here. What doesn't occur is. It, it doesn't come to an innige in die Einheit. So there's no inner unity, an inner and also homely, you could almost say, unity of the theoretical and the practical. And um, so while appearances for Kant are real, uh, or the, the shining of the appearances can be real, um, however, this it's real to the sciences. So it's real to a theoretical reason that constructs or wants to construct objects of appearance without inherent contradiction. So this is a non-creative theoretical reason and practical reason that is a sterile and dead um, ethicism. Right, this kind of weird ethicism that we have today as well. Everything's ethical, but without an ethos. So, his response to Kant is poiesis. And that, of course, we know also from Heidegger. Poiesis. Schöpferische Vernunft. Creative reason. Reason that can scoop up from the Urquelle, from the original source, and has... Primacy before theoretical and practical reason. And he says actually that Kant should have already seen this. So similar to Hegel also, what he attempts to do, uh, Natop, that is, is to find um, a categorial, a grundlegung, a categorial um, foundation of everything of spirit and that means of everything that is real. However, his approach will be very different from Hegel's, and he calls Hegel's, is what I want to point to, a titanischer Entwurf. Hegel's achievement is a titanic project. Titanic. That's perhaps crucial hmm? to think about what does it mean to have a return of the titans in thought. That here we have a thought that is a thinking that is boundless, limitless, also to a certain degree, then without measure, without balance, perhaps. This is what he implied here. For NATO, however, again, similar as for Hegel, the question is how to make the beginning. What is the beginning? By the way, Heidegger will be very uh, will be a very um, 
aware of the difference between Anfang and Begin in German. So Heidegger never speaks of Begin, which is why another beginning is actually a terrible translation, misguiding translation of Ein anderer Anfang. Um, so it, it, it's Anfang is, means to catch, to catch something of the tradition and through transformation, appropriation, letting ourselves be transformed and move on. But the, the same question already arises for Hegel and for Schelling with the, with the unprethinkable or the immemorial is the question of what is the Voraussetzung, what is, what, what is the presupposition, what, what, what comes before thinking and what initiates thought. For NATO, yes, doubt is important because doubt allows us to see or get behind presuppositions. But even presuppositionlessness still has presuppositions, which is why, and this is where NATO is playing with fire, and he knows that he is, he introduces the zero point, the null point, the uh, Il punto del nulla. So this nulla, uh, this zero point, is his attempt to bring together almost schematically being and non-being and let them whirl around a certain fixed abstract point. Um, but still, you know, he is aware that modernity is hurling towards an absolute zero. Now, more radical than doubt is questioning. A questioning or asking, of course, has another issue, namely, you cannot question questioning itself. But what this indicates, and we can see perhaps all the, the need for the question of being spitting, hmm, together with being and time. So again, an external superficial way of looking at this is, oh, there's an influence from Nietzsche to Heidegger. No, there are Historical, I don't like the word historical because it's actually, it's not on point, but there are, let's say, there are weird, uncanny turnings, bottles that require a certain way of responding to what there is. And that is already becoming clear here that it will be being in time. The sense then is what is behind every question. So that to question is the searching for sense, for Sinn, nach Sinn suchen. Um, so one cannot ask behind asking. There is a meaning of all meaning. It is senseless, it's without sense, to search something, anything more radical than sense. And the riddle, the das Rätsel, the riddle, maybe the, myst the mysterion of everything, is, the, is that everything is there, but is not simply given. It is only through the question. So the sense is not given. It's there, but not given. It's very similar for Heidegger. That the understanding of being is not given, but is there. It's pre-theoretical. It's because being itself is taught ti in ninai, that which was being, as Nato translates Aristotle here from the metaphysics. And he reminds us of the original, the primordial riddle, and the eternal recurrence of the riddle. Sense, then, is, you could say, pre-theoretical. We are in communion with meaning and with sense without being taught about sense or truth. The Thauma, the Wunderhaftigkeit, the wondrousness of everything, that is the last radicality. And that is not, um, of course, just derivative of anything. And the riddle must, therefore, in this weird movement from there but not given through questioning revealed, the riddle must carry within itself 
already its solution. And this is a this truth is already seen by Plato, as Nato points out here, in his Mino dialogue. However, I'll say this again, the dangerous fire with which Nato plays is his introduction of the zero point. Because it's all too schematic. It seems that he's falling back into the mathematization of the world, of which the neo Kantians are not entirely innocent. So, briefly, in closing, he does mention in section 14 Goethe and the Faustian spirit. And he wants, it seems, the human being to realize, the modern human being of Europe, to realize that yes, we are standing in a field of ruins and that the tower that stood there firmly is already collapsing. But this collapse is itself uh, <laughs> It's down to the human being, to to the modern to modern man to understand, to see, to move, not away from, but one could say, uh, um, to realize where the where to how to spot the field of ruins, as it were. And he mentions here why. Um, why do we bury our our treasures of art in mu museums, which are graveyards? And why do we uh, want to get uh, historically uh, uh, excited and, and get a rush from historical, historiographical examples without standing ourselves in a profound and deep memory of what there is. And of course, in closing, one should perhaps also point out that what NATO is after, post Kant and post Hume and also Hegel, is the attempt to unite again being and thinking in a way that life itself comes alive in thinking, being. So thank you very much indeed for listening and feel free to share the video on Paul Native. There will be more in the coming future.